Welcome, everybody. I'm Ed Coburn. I'm one of the co-chairs of Renewed and uh, and also the president of, of Cabot Wealth Network. Um, I am delighted to be uh, introducing you, hosting this uh, webinar today, uh, Improve Your Conversions, Relationship Marketing in the, in the Digital Age, uh, with uh, presented by Marty Greif. Um, and I will point out that, you know, Americans want to quickly look at that and see grief. It is grief. It's the old I before E except after C rule. So you can you, you just uh, just trust, trust that. Um, and, and Marty, in addition to being a delightful person who I've gotten to know uh, over the last few years, uh, is a conversion rate optimization expert. He's an author. He's a speaker. Uh, he is the president of a company called Site Tuners. Um, and and has extensive experience. If I spent uh, all the time telling you about all of his uh, career accomplishments, we'd run out of time for him to present information. So I will refer you to uh, LinkedIn or his website, uh, the the sitetuners.com website. Uh, and and but I will also mention uh, Mar Marty wrote a great book. Uh, that you, you will recognize if you part, as you listen to this session, uh, it's called True Connections Relationship Marketing in the, in the Digital World. It's available on Amazon and, and other places where books are sold. And it's not a, you know, it's not a 600 page tome that's unaccessible. It's very practical and uh, I, I highly recommend that. So uh, just want to refer people to that. And now, Marty, I would love to get out of your way and let you uh, uh, educate all of us. Fair enough. Well, thank you. Um, let me start this way, if I may. Before we begin, I actually have a confession to make. It turns out that I'm actually a very selfish person. All right. I, I think about myself first. I am self-centered. And, and the reason for that is because I'm an animal. I'm literally an animal. And interestingly enough, Every single one of you, you're all animals. Now, 50,000 years ago, our ancestors were living in caves, struggling to survive. And they had animal instincts that helped them to survive. Unfortunately, today, those same animal instincts that make us selfish can hurt us when we're trying to get people to subscribe or renew. The good news is, while you all may be animals, maybe some more than others, that's a different problem, but while you all may be animals, your customers and your prospects are animals too. And they are driven by the same selfish animal instincts. And when you understand these animal instincts, you can harness them for good, or for evil, your choice, but let's go with the good for now. And understanding selfishness really is the basis of really good conversions and conversion rate optimization. So with that said, I'm gonna ask a rhetorical question. Are you selfish? And if you don't think you're selfish, I'm sorry, you're wrong. And I had to start this way. Let's talk, talk about this. How many of you have been at a conference and you've met somebody and 30 seconds later, you've forgotten their name? Why? Well, they weren't interesting. You were concerned about you. We're selfish. Now, some of you are really good at remembering names and I'll grant you that. And some of you are just so memorable that nobody will ever forget your name. But unfortunately, for most of us, we are so self-absorbed, we forget people's names. Or how many times you've been in the middle of a conversation with someone and they start looking at their phone and their text messages? Or worse yet, they answer a call. They don't even say, do you mind if I take it? Whatever is on that text or whoever is calling is more important than you. This is especially annoying if you have children at the dinner table, all right? But that's a whole different problem but we're selfish. I travel a lot. Um, and if you listen to the beginning part of our, our discussion about travel, I was literally just came back from Europe where I was doing a presentation. And I so loved this. 
How many times have you been on a plane where you just land, somebody turns on their cell phone and is like, hey, we just landed. We're, yeah, we're, la we're on the plane. We just land. We landed. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be at there. Nobody cares, but they're really loud because them talking to whoever it is they're talking to was more important than you. And even though you want to slap these people, it's probably not a good plan. And I'll go a step further. My favorite. How many times have you seen somebody on an airplane walking down, they see an opening, they put their bag in, and then they walk to the back of the plane? Because God forbid their bag wasn't in front of them, as opposed to having to wait to get off the plane behind them. Drives me nuts. We are selfish. So hopefully we have kind of beat that into the ground because everybody is selfish. We are driven by our own animal instincts. We talk about ourselves. We are bad listeners. We forget names and faces. And especially in the United States, okay, uh, we are the land of instant gratification. Um, and, uh, and we don't read. We just want things that are immediate. I will tell you, uh, it, with all due respect to uh, Sue Stevens, the English are much better at this than we are Americans. They uh, they read more and they are willing to put off that instant gratification. But Sue, the English are still animals, okay? Now, Maslow's hierarchy. Hopefully you've all seen this um, at some point, but basically we have everything from at the bottom of the period are physical needs, physiological needs, all the way up to self-actualization needs. And if we talk about the, the physical needs, air, water, food, shelter, sleep, uh, clothing, reproduction, n all of these needs are at the bottom of the, uh, of the pyramid. But what's interesting about them, and I think you can all relate to this, is when you're hungry, for example, you eat. But in the middle of eating, you suddenly become thirsty, so you start to drink. And maybe you don't finish your meal because you're tired. So these needs, while they're all potentially urgent, the level of urgency rises or lowers based on the moment. As we move up the pyramid to self-actualization, the desire to be all that you can be, this is where people give to charity. It's where people uh, pick careers like being a teacher, uh, you know, serving their country. You know, again, these are all good things, right? And I'm going to share with you my self-actualization. Everything is driven by our needs. So I happen to be on the board of directors for a charity that works with people who are struggling with mental illness. And we, uh, we have multiple locations in the state of Florida. We are in the process of, of raising money for housing for people because people with mental illness typically need some more housing. Now, why do I do this? Do I do this because I'm a nice person? Well, I would like to think I'm a nice person, but the reality is there's obviously something under the covers where I have this need to give back. So it either assuages some guilt that I have or it makes me feel good about myself. The reason we give to charity and do these things is not for other people, but because of how it makes us feel. I'm sorry, no matter what you're doing, everything we do is driven by some animal instinct under the covers. So even these selfless acts, donating to charity, risking your life, teacher making sure their students, you know, scientists working on, a, on a, an invention, all of these are self-centered. Now here's the thing, digital marketers are selfish. Now they don't know it and maybe they haven't accepted it, but in the scheme of things, marketers are so consumed with their idea that they forget about the visitor. And when you forget about the visitor, you're basically losing opportunities to convert people. I know that digital marketers are trying to do the best job that they can, but there's some causes to why digital marketers forget about the visitors, okay? Let's talk about some obvious things they do, gated content. You've all seen really long and relevant form fills, name, email, email, uh, you know, phone number, address, um, what did you have for lunch? 
Did it make your tummy sick? I mean, it's silly. All right. Why do we have these long content fills? You really don't need those, especially for things like downloaded content. Now, for this audience, I say too much content on a website. Well, obviously, we're selling content in most of our most of the, the people here. But in the marketing of your content, you really want to provide the content they need to consume to be able to take the next step instead of focusing on just spewing as much as you can. <laughs> You want to make sure that you are providing the valuable information that they need to be able to make a decision. <clears throat> You'll all forgive me. I did mention that I traveled. Um, uh, so um, I seem to have caught a little bit of a bug. So I may mute myself if I start coughing. <clears throat> so I apologize for that. All right. So why are we selfish? Uh, as marketers, we let business owners make decisions. Um, do not let, even if you are the business owner, at the end of the day, um, your opinion of your website doesn't matter. My opinion of your website doesn't matter. The only people that matter are your website visitors. Or we try something, we've worked in the past, we hope it's going to work it in, the, in the next time, and we do the same things over and over and over again. But I'm here to tell you that it is not about you, it is about the visitor. And if you focus on the visitor, it is a win for everyone. And the most important slide in the deck is this next slide. If you get nothing else out of this presentation, this is the slide. When you align the visitor's intent with their experience and your company goals, that's where the money is. Any one of those being out of alignment and you don't sell, you don't get subscriptions. Whatever they're looking for, you need to deliver it to them in a way that works for them. And as long as that matches your goals, when all three things are aligned, that's where the money is. Now, let me show you an example of that. I think we can agree that the most selfish page on any website is the About Us page, all right? What's the About Us page about? It's about the company. But I will tell you that this company, which generates over $100 million a year in revenue, let us change their About Us page, which increased their conversion rate for new visitors and generated, are you ready for this? Just changing the About Us page generated an incremental multiple number of millions of dollars per year on their site. And that's because we focused on the visitor. Now, what happened here is people came to the About Us page. They signed up for their newsletter. They signed up for their private Facebook group. They measure and track everything. And guess what? What happened here is people signed up at higher volumes. They were able to measure it. And it generated millions of additional dollars annually. And if we focus in a little bit deeper, this is still the About Us page, but you'll notice we've got the words flattering, safe place, your friend in fashion, feel confident. All of that is bolded. We turned something that is very self-centered and we turned it into something that is focused on the visitor. So imagine, if you will, that you are now a woman in Australia and you are looking at this page. And you see it's flattering, safe place, your friend in fashion. How would you feel? You'd feel good. You would sign up for their services. <clears throat> All right. So what are you going to learn today? How to grow your business by lowering your marketing costs. As crazy as that sounds, we're going to teach you how to lower your marketing costs and make more money. How to focus on your prospects by asking three questions. And then at the end, we're going to do some live website reviews from uh, a couple of volunteers from the audience. Um, and we're going to show you exactly what needs to be changed. We'll spend a few minutes on each one, time permitting. All right, let's start with understanding the economic value of your website. Uh, it is amazing how many people don't look at this one step. Uh, let's ask the question, what's a subscription worth? If a subscription is worth a um, uh, $1,000 a year, and assume it takes 100 visitors to get one subscription, well, then the value of a visitor is $10. Your conversion rate is 1%. If you want to generate a million dollars in sale, you need 100 subscriptions. This is all pretty straight math. I don't think there's any confusion here. 
So what if you wanted to increase your revenue by 50%? So in this instance, let's assume that your revenue is a is million dollars, your advertising is 500,000, and you're selling a subscription to some content that you've already, you know, um, you, you're, you know, maybe not have additional costs for additional content. For the sake of argument, I understand there's cost of goods sold, but let's for sake of argument say that your only real cost here is advertising and your conversion rate is 1%. So what do most people do? Well, what most people do is they say, well, let's increase our advertising budget. So if we increase our, our spend to, um, to 750, then our net would be 750. But that's really not a good way to think about this because if you do that, every if this is monthly or yearly, you're spending an additional $250,000. If instead you increase the conversion rate by 50%, then your revenue goes up to that 1.5 million, but your advertising dollars stayed the same and your net is a million dollars. Conversion rate optimization is the gift that keeps on giving. So if this was, for the sake of argument, we'll say a monthly number right now, in option one, yes, you would make an additional $3 million a year, but you know what? You would have spent in your advertising an additional $3 million a year. Versus in option two, you would have generated, you know, uh, double of that without having to spend it. So with all that said, how do you get here? What do you do? Turns out there's three critical questions that every visitor asks when they land on a page. And those three questions are really straightforward. Am I in the right place? How do I feel about this site? And what am I supposed to do here? And we've tested this over and over and over again. Now I'm gonna repeat those three questions uh, a slightly different way. Am I in the right place? How do I feel about this website? What am I supposed to do here? These are selfish questions. Remember I said you're all animals and so are your visitors? Well, they are selfish too. They are asking those questions very harshly when they land on whatever landing page you've got. And then when they move from page to page within your website, they are asking those questions in, in, in another instance, but maybe not quite as harshly. Let's talk about each one of these in some detail. Am I in the right place? Well, you wanna match that visitor intent and their expectations, and you don't wanna make your visitors think. So in this instance, and this is an e-commerce example, and I've got some examples for subscriptions too. But in, in this example here, uh, if I'm searching for solitaire diamond rings, that's the Google request, I get a, 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 an ad back, all right, where solitaire diamond rings were promised. And then I land on a page and I see rings. But I don't know about you, I wouldn't know a solitaire diamond ring if it bit me. As opposed to this is a client of ours where it's the same exact question. They get a, um, uh, a reply about solitaire diamond rings, but you'll notice on the landing page, solitaire diamond rings are delivered. You can't assume that whatever you're promising in your ad or in your metadata, that your, your visitor is going to understand it. And for a lot of people, they wouldn't know that a solitaire diamond ring meant there, there was one stone. Now we learned this um, you know, through the process, but whatever is promised has to be delivered. And I will tell you that if you make people think and wonder if they're in the right place, they will leave and then you will wind up not having sales and subscriptions. How do I feel about this site? A well-executed design, all right, boost credibility, social proof, security seals, transparency, all of this builds support. So if we look at the before <clears throat> from Cabot Wealth, uh, Ed uh, was uh, a guinea pig here. And this is from, I can't tell you how many years ago uh, that we looked at this. Um, if we look at how do I feel about this, you know, I feel okay. You know, they've got the best stocks. <laughs> Ed looks like he wants to make a comment. <laughs> well, well, all right, so the best stocks to buy since 1970. But if you look at the after here, I will tell you um, on the top right-hand corner is their phone number. 
Okay. And this, this picture was taken today. And by the way, the color is wrong. That phone number should be your click to call icon color, just so you know. Right. And doesn't get away scot free here either. Um, but you'll notice, and we've tested this phone number in the top right hand corner on a desktop and the click to call icon on mobile. We've tested this. This is the number one um, trust factor on the face of the planet. And we've tested this in well over 40 countries. It always increases conversions. You'll also notice he's got as seen on and he's using logos underneath it as trust symbols. So this is a lot further, um, uh, a lot more trustworthy than, than for the sake of argument, you know, the previous version of it. And that's the kind of stuff that you do to increase conversions and make people feel better potentially about the site. The next question, what am I supposed to do here? Um, we are literally, I'm gonna go back to animals. We are visual creatures, all right? And we need something that makes it really easy for us to, to take one look at a site and know what we're supposed to do. If we look at this example here, where they pen, uh, they potentially sell, I guess, uh, knives and some, I don't know, some pots, all right? I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do, but we turn that into a very, very high converting site with visual navigation. Think of it this way. When you go into the supermarket, you see signs that say dairy this way, produce this way, you know, meat this way and so on, vegetables that way. We are visual in nature. And I, I just as a, as a, as a pro tip, you'll notice like in bakeware and cookware, there are category level images. When you show people, and we've tested this too, and I know this sounds crazy. When you show people like round bakeware, and if you only showed round bakeware, there are people who go, oh, I, I want a square bakeware, all right? And they wouldn't buy it, they, they just leave. So visual navigation, including on a subscription site where I can go down the right path for me as a visitor, absolutely makes a difference. So in summary on, on these three questions, answering the question of, am I in the right place for your visitor, allows you to match that visitor intent with the expectations and you don't wanna make your visitors think. Now, I know that you can all still see me. I'm probably a tiny little picture here, but, but I'm going to um, illustrate the don't make me think. Thing. If this is the gas tank of patience in my brain and over here is full, you don't know before I come to your website, did I have a wonderful happy day and my patience is full? Or did the dog pee in the rug and my patience is here? Did I fight with my spouse, okay? Did I have one of my children do something that just drove me? You have no idea what level of patience I have. And the more you make me think, the more likely I am to lose patience and leave your site. Answering the question, how do I feel about this site? Uh, with well-executed designs, it boosts the credibility. Um, and if you have social proofs and security, sales, all of that builds trust, which will allow people to feel comfortable to potentially give you their information, put in credit card information, subscribe. You need to have a trustworthy site. And then last but not least, what am I supposed to do here? Visual emphasis directs the visitor's attention, okay? And you want to make sure that your navigation and calls to action are, are very well organized. Now, let's apply these three questions in some detail before we get into some live website examples. So on applying the three questions, we're going to talk about three things that if you do this, you immediately should stop doing this and fix it. So these are some things that when we're done, Please, please, please just go do what I'm telling you. We have, we have tested this across hundreds, if not thousands of sites, and I'm telling you this matters. All right, removing rotating banners. Why? Motion is distracting for a visitor and it, it tends to push the banners down. So again, you still see me, we are literally animals. And so in our, you know, our ancestors time, when they came out of the cave, movement was potentially a dangerous signal, like an animal is coming to eat them or an enemy tribe was sneaking up to attack, all right? And every time there's a rotating banner, and I'll exaggerate, our lizard brain kicks in and we go, what's that? What's that? And I will tell you that rotating banners, especially on a homepage, lowers your conversion rate eight to 12% from the people who land on that page. 
So if that's not enough for you to make those go away, I don't know what is. Now, how do you measure this, the success? If you remove the rotating banner and you put content that is worthwhile, you can't just put garbage up there, obviously. But if you remove the distraction, it will reduce your bounce rate. It'll increase your engagement rate. You should see the number of pages go up and your conversion rate will go up. And I mentioned here macro and micro conversions. And I just want to talk about mac the difference between macro and micro for a second. A macro conversion is a subscription or a sale. A micro conversion might be getting one step closer. They start to fill out a form. They get to add to cart. They're doing something. They're moving further along in the process. And if your macro conversions are going up, um, but are sorry, if your micro conversions are going up, but your macros are not, it just means that they've gotten further in your funnel, but you have more work to do to get them the rest of the way. But removing rotating banners absolutely will increase your conversion rate. So Sephora here had a rotating banner and things would just magically go through here and people you know, didn't know what they were necessarily looking for. If you look at this, the after skincare, makeup, hair care, it made it really simple for people shopping to know what it is they, they were looking for. You know, don't make people think. All right, visual navigation on a homepage. Why do you want to have visual navigation? You want it to be really easy for somebody to find what they're looking for. And again, how do you measure success? Bounce rate. If you have visual navigation, it makes it really easy for, for them to go from page to page. So your bounce rate should go down, your engagement rate should go up. Your time on page, interestingly enough, on, on the home page, if they're on this, it'll actually decrease the amount of time on the home page, but it'll increase the time on the site. And again, your conversion rate should go up. So if we look at this example here, when these people first came to us, I didn't realize this was an e-commerce site. I thought this was a blog. I had no idea what it is they were doing here. And what we did is we turned that into this, and this increased their conversion rate by 277% because there's visual navigation and it's really easy to know what to do. And I know this is an e-commerce example, but it wouldn't matter if this was a subscription example or if this was a uh, uh, you know uh, something where their existing customer they're renewing. Visual navigation works for everybody. All right, next, place trust symbols in the header. Look, they don't know you, all right? You might be two people in a cave in Afghanistan trying to steal their information. They don't know you. They don't trust you. You want your visitors to feel safe. Well, again, how do you measure that? You want to you know, measure your bounce rate, your time on site, your conversion rates, all of these same things. And I'm going to show you an oldie but goodie first, and then I'm going to show you something closer to your industry, all right? This is just my favorite example of all time. This is the before. I think these people no longer exist because the FDA uh, said waste loss pills. Are you kidding me? There is nothing trustworthy about that. But we turned that into this. And you'll notice there's a money day guarantee and so on. And this became a very high converting site. Now, here's the thing I want to point out. You'll notice in the very top, it says 233,000 customers, quality guaranteed, formulated in the USA with a phone number. These are trust symbols. Now, we never tell people to lie. You never, ever, ever lie. So 233,000 plus customers was true. Quality guaranteed, they had a guarantee, it's true. Formulated in the USA. But here's the thing, all of those trust symbols, like the 233,000 customers with the thumbs up, well, we made up that symbol, the quality guaranteed with a checkbox. We made up that symbol, but oh my God, did this kill and did this work, all right? So as long as you're not lying, all right, and you put these in the header like that, it works. Now, why would you put them in the header? Because you have no control in some instances from an SEO perspective, what page they land on. And so if they're in the header, no matter what page they land on, your trust symbols are there. Now, let's take a look at something a little closer to home. This is the before, uh, and uh, and you know, there's there's really not a lot of trust on here. Well, it does say we have thousands. Why why have thousands of professionals certified with us? But if you look at this, 
We have tested this. Phone number in the top right-hand corner is absolutely the most trust symbol in the world. And we've tested in like 40 countries. And then we also have the Better Business uh, logo up there. You know what? That makes sense. Now there's lots of other trust on here, but these types of trust symbols absolutely increase conversions. Now, we're gonna move into live website reviews of some of you folks who have uh, graciously volunteered to, uh, to, uh, to be guinea pigs. Uh, I will tell you, uh, just in a second, because I'm probably not gonna come back to this slide. If you're interested in a copy of the book, uh, that'll take you to Amazon, sitetuners.com slash book. Uh, if you wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, you're more than welcome to. And if you would like to schedule a call with one of my teammates, um, that link will take you to our website to schedule a call and we will review your website. Those are not sales calls, believe it or not. Uh, we spend 30 minutes and we will walk through what we see. If you want to talk about how we can help you, that would be a secondary call. The first call is, it's kind of like the, I hate to say it, it's almost like the drug dealer. You know, we give out free samples, okay? Um, but it works. All right, now let's move into some live website reviews. Ed, any comments before I uh, go to live website reviews? Uh, no, thanks, Marty. This this is great, and I I will I will say that Marty, you know, why we took Marty uh, up on one of those uh, initial consultations. I, I think we may have exceeded thirty minutes by by a tad. <laughs> um, as, as as you may have detected, Marty's a bit of a talker. God knows I'm a bit of a talker. So you put two of us on a phone call, it was bound to happen. But um, but we made tons of changes just based on that half hour-ish phone call. So uh, thanks for that. And and I invite uh, the, those of you who have who have um, uh, volunteered the, the, your sites, folks from Beer Marketers Insight, if you're on here, uh, EB Medicine, I know is on here, and Peter Chapman and Beer Group. Uh, I invite you to come on camera so uh, while while uh, Marty's going through these, so he can have uh, interchange with you uh, in real time. So, okay. So, um, hopefully, you see. I'm just double checking. We see the. Whoops, I didn't want that to happen. I wanted this to happen. What do you see on the screen? Hopefully, you see beer marketers. Yes. Excellent. All right. And do we have the person from beer marketers here? Anybody? No. Nope. No. Not. All right. Well, then instead I of signed I, up. Okay. No worries. Well, uh, so here's what I'm going to say uh, about uh, beer marketers. Um, the the starting and, and let let's be clear about something. A lot of you are selling into different uh, niches, and you might be the only game in town, right? But and Ed and I talked about this earlier. But but here's the reality of it. They can spend their money on you or they can spend their money on somebody else. And so even though you might think that you don't have to have all these conversion elements in here, I would argue people are spending money. Whenever they're spending money, you want to do everything possible to be as persuasive as possible. So with that said, if we look at Beer Insights here, uh, we'll start with, I understand who they are and what they do. So that's good. Uh, but their logo is pushing their their content down too far, um, and they are overusing the color. If your color is uh, this orangey color here, and this is you're using it here, it really should not be used here. We're overdoing the color. If this is your primary call to action color, and we've tested this over and over and over again, then the color can be your um, your your um, your your inside color. It can be your the color for highlights, but it can't be used over and over and over again because you're diluting. <laughs> great for beer. You are diluting uh, the effectiveness of the color scheme here. And then when we go down to here and we look at our newsletters, all right, that's boring. Guys, I know a lot of you have newsletters. I get it. I don't know how to say this other than to say it outright. Nobody wants your newsletter, okay? They want what your newsletter is going to give them, 
Okay. They, 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 nobody wants to sign up for this stuff. They certainly don't want to pay for it. But what they want are, you know, ready to take your 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 beer your beer knowledge to the next level, right? That's what they want. They want the benefit of it, not newsletters. That couldn't be more boring. Okay. We really want to have people sign up here. And then I will tell you, and I don't know how many people are, are subscribed here, but wouldn't it be nice if it said, join over 10,000 beer enthusiasts who have subscribed annually to our, and again, I'm making up the numbers because I don't know their numbers, but, but I would go like, oh my God, these are the guys. I want these guys. This makes sense to me. There's no marketing here. This is just hoping that people are coming here and are excited about it. Now we're gonna go a little further. We go to our newsletter, Beer Marketing Insights, all right? And I don't know how many of you wear glasses, but I will tell you, if you look at your site and you take your glasses off and you can't read it, and you can go to other people's sites and with your glasses off, you can read it. What that says is that your website, either the font is too small, or the contrast is too is not good. So in this case, this font is way too small. This is also what I would call, uh, and we jokingly refer to this as an army of words marching around the page looking for meaning, especially in the United States. We don't read. I know you're selling newsletters, but we don't read. So how do we get people to want to do this? Well, how do we get them to subscribe? Well, how about this, all right? What if we had highlighted insight, actually, let's go from here. Insights, get the necessary to stay abreast of the latest industry trends or you know, the most important beer industry facts, trends, and insights. Why isn't there stuff bold in here so that the average person can just scan it and go, yeah, I want some of that, okay? I will also tell you um, that subscribe to the insights wherever you have a call to action, there needs to be trust underneath here, and there needs to be different types of trust. So we could have reviews, we could have ratings, we could have number of subscribers, but instead we've made this uh, <clears throat> all about them. So subscribe to this, right? How about, and I understand it's subscribe, but how about expand your beer knowledge or your beer marketing knowledge with a subscription, right? Make it benefit oriented here. All right, as opposed to this is just, here's my stuff. And then I go to subscribe a little bit further, all right? And here's the, here's, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I apologize to this person if they're listening to the recording later on, but, but here's the subscriber. You're telling me how much it is, but why, why isn't on one side of this page, something that says, ready to expand your knowledge with some check boxes. With a subscription, you get this. And you get this. Check boxes, by the way, are good things. Bullets are like so-so things. If you want me to start filling out a form, tell me what I get and mark it to me. There is no marketing here whatsoever, folks. How many of you have pages where you're trying to get them to give you money, yet you forgot to tell them what they get? If you're asking me for money, tell me what I get, okay? All right, um, that's enough for them. I'm gonna move on because we only have a little bit of time for each one, all right? So my apologies. Um, and you'll hear things that I'm gonna say over and over again. Now, movement, we've got movement in the background. Um, are, are these folks here? Somebody from the Beard Group? Again, people have signed up from there, but um, no worries, no worries. Well, they get they get to, to to listen afterwards. Well, here's the thing: everything you do on your website needs to be intentional, right? So this movement in the background, I don't know how that adds value to my life as a visitor. I have no idea how that adds value. Okay, so if you're going to have an image or something in here, make sure that the image actually tells a story. I know it's in New York. You tell me it's in New York. Do I really need to see the skyline in New York? Is that going to make me want to come to your conference? It's moving. And so the moving means that I'm not going to read the words and then to add insult to injury on it. 
below there, there's other movement happening. So there's multiple things happening and distracting me. Now, I will tell you the number one trust symbol on the face of the planet is a phone number. And even for a conference, having a phone number makes sense. And I will, uh, let me give you an example. If you really say, I don't want to have phone numbers on my website, and there are people who are going to say that, all right, let me show you a way to minimize the, the phone number, all right, and, and make this work. This is a, uh, was a client of ours. They just sold their business. And, but this is brilliant. If you look at the phone number here, when you hover over it, it actually drops down with FAQs, track your order, email us, chat, and it's got the phone number. Just having that there increases the conversion rate and lowers the number of phone calls. And this works both on desktop and on mobile. Now, I will tell you, even on this Everton, the phone number icon is all wrong. Their color for uh uh, their, their call to action is red. That phone number should have been red up on the top. So we're missing the phone number here. All right. And we've got, you know, this is passed. So in, in fairness, this might be a little hard to do, but, but really this should have been uh, what it is I'm going to learn at this conference, how it's going to make me a better, I'm assuming attorney here. Um, and so it really needs to be all about uh, about the the visitor. Now, bullet points, and we've tested this. Bullet points are are is is are things. It's stuff. Good things have check boxes. Okay. By the way, this is not a test of my ability to draw with a mouse. All right. But if you put check boxes next to things, people go, oh, check. That's a good thing. Oh, I want some of that. Check. It's a good thing. Bullet points are for things that don't necessarily add a lot of excitement or value. Check boxes do. Okay. And so we've tested that over and over and over again. All right. So if we then go down to, because we know that viewing the conference agenda is important. All right. Uh, why isn't there any marketing here, all right? Instead, we're talking, we're, we're really, could we make this a little bit more boring? I don't think so, right? Why doesn't it say in here, expand your knowledge with the expansive agenda? I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit here, but give me some love here. Tell me why I want to go here. Tell me what I'm going to learn. Tell me that I'm going to have an amazing time. Tell me that I'm going to be a better you know, uh, 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 attorney. And then look at the state of industry class action review. Okay, let me let me say what this says. Blah, 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 blah. Why doesn't it say in this session, you will learn blah, 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 blah. Takeaways, key takeaways from this section. Why isn't there anything that makes me go, you know what, I absolutely got to make sure that I listen to Gerald and Jennifer you know, well, maybe this one, not so much, but oh my God, I absolutely want to be in this panel one because I learned about the, the key takeaways, right? As opposed to making it about the, the talk, make it about what the visitor is going to learn. By the way, my goal here is not to be mean. I, I am not trying to be mean, all right? I, I'm trying to make a point here that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you want to tell people. It matters what they need to consume to be able to actually come to your conference, to buy your, your, your beer newsletter, to actually get, you know, continuing education credits, all right? It's not about you. It is about the, the visitor, okay? So if that hasn't come across at this point, I don't know what. Now, this one here, um, I will tell you, uh, do, are these people here? Yes. Go We've ahead. got Bill and, Bill and Stephanie here, and I know there are others who aren't on screen yet, but yeah, so they're they're well represented here. Marty. Okay. So let me tell you, I looked at these. Slash sessions. away, Marty. Slash yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. Again, not a goal to be mean. All right. So, but I do have to tell you this, all kidding aside, I looked at your site multiple times in advance because you have a speed problem. I will tell you that. And, and Ed can vouch for this. When you have a speed problem on your website, it kills your conversion rate. It seems to be working right now, but I would click on something and nothing happened. I actually even rebooted my computer to see if it was on my end. You really, really, really need to do a speed test, okay? My fear is there's something broken under the covers that's killing you, okay? So if you do nothing else, that's the number one thing. Please do that, okay? 
All right. So now when we go through the site itself, it looks like you've got all sorts of different types of uh, continuing education credits, right? And there's different um, different courses that they could potentially take and different things that you could sell. I will tell you that, that even if you are well-known and a brand in, in here, this movement, let's say I'm interested in the third thing or the fourth thing, and I'm not interested in the other two, you've annoyed me already as a visitor, all right? I'm here because I'm here for a reason, and you're basically going, I don't care why you're here, this is what I wanna tell you, all right? That doesn't work. You would be much better served here to have a, a banner that ended about here, and in this banner, you would have something about you guys that was what you're really proud for. So if one of you were to tell me what your unique selling proposition is or your unique value proposition, the thing that you are so proud of that matters to your visitor, if you could give me three to six to 10 words, I would love to hear what it is. You didn't know it was gonna be a test today, did you? <laughs> oh, I see, you wanna, in real time. I really want it, yeah. Say, um, we help physicians, um, help we help physicians help people uh, and save lives or something okay like that. and how do you do that with we practical evidence-based um peer-reviewed um techniques um and and the continuing medical education okay then why doesn't this say okay um uh, and I'll, I'll make up words. Don't use my words. You, you, you're going to have to make this better because it's off the top. But what if there was a picture here of 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 some doctors and and some patients, and it says, you know, enabling physicians to have better outcomes through. And I forget the words you use. Practical, they, they, whatever the word. But it. But what if it said enabling physicians to have better outcomes? Okay. Uh, and I know they want words like that. I'm not sure the right words. There's real work involved in doing this. And then through whatever your value proposition is. And then I would say something along the lines of join over, you know, you maybe you've done 100,000 physicians, a million physicians since you've been doing this for forever. Join over a million physicians since whatever year who have had better outcomes with EB medicine. Wouldn't I feel like I'm in the right place, right? Wouldn't I feel really good about you? Okay. And, and, Here's the other thing. If I then underneath here said, and I'm going to give you some options because I don't know what the right options. We're not working together, so I'm 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 going to make assumptions and guesses. But what if there was some visit, some uh, navigation here? It says for physicians, all right, and and underneath here you had some sub level navigation that said what it is, and then this might be for for hospital administrators or practice administrators, because maybe they're buying group uh, 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 continuing education for this. And maybe there's things for nurse practitioners. Again, I don't know your business, but if I had these paths here, I would go, oh my God, they're talking to me and I could go down that path. And this is simpler, similar to, if I go back to um, Everton, this is similar to like the sub-level navigation here that I was talking about. And I've got a path, but instead of it being by product category, in your case, it would be by the type of person, maybe a physician. And maybe it's the type of physician. Maybe it's a trauma physician, uh, a surgeon, uh, whatever, right? I don't know what the right organization is, um, um, but whatever that organization is, when I get here, um, you want to grab my attention as quickly as possible so I feel really good about it. Does this make sense, guys? Right? Uh, Absolutely. And again, you pretty well nailed our business without knowing much about it. <laughs> we settled all those buckets you mentioned. Okay. <laughs> so, but but again, make it about them and not about you. All right. And I promise you, if, if you just here, well, bonus for you because you showed up. Okay. Let me tell you what to do to actually make a lot of money off of people that come <laughs> off your website right away. All right. So underneath your logo here, uh, so that you have it, have something like uh join over a million health professionals, you know, uh, 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 or over a million health professionals uh, served since whatever the date is, right? And I'm making up, put the right words in there. So no matter what page I land on, it will always be there and it'll make sense. Put your phone number up here, do it the way I showed on Everton, okay? And I promise you that'll make a difference. 
Um, stop, stop this rotating banner, please. Just shoot that in the head. All right. And put that call to put that. No, no, seriously. <laughs> Put the, that value proposition in here, all right? And so that I've got it, have that visual navigation. I haven't even scrolled. Put that here. I promise you, if you do that, okay, it will absolutely increase the conversions and revenue through the people that land on your homepage. I promise you that, okay? It will absolutely do that. And the same is true on mobile. When you do mobile, um, uh, you're going to have to click the call icon. You're still going to have the, you know, the logo information here. Um, you're still going to have on the top of the mobile. Actually, let's see what your mobile looks like. I'm afraid to do this. Hold on. Marty, you can get, be a little proud of us. We're already having a conversation on our internal chat about adding the phone number. It will be done like in a day, I promise. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> so. Um, all right, so the, you should have to click the call icon. I still want the words underneath here. I'm okay with the search. Um, I'm not sure what the what the what the purpose of the menus are because you've got a menu on the top here. Uh, stop with the this this here. I love this this the emergency medical. This is good. All right, so um, I would I would suggest one of the ways that you might consider doing this is is have these be expandable so that on one of these um, if they expand on it they might see some sub navigation if you have sub navigation for these are you you know what i'm talking about with with expandable versus okay good so if you did that that might make sense but let's click on one of these real quick emergency visits and get more evidence and less time i love that these are good words it's fine these are good words this is not me 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 so you spend more time on your mobile, haven't you? Okay. It's time to call it. Good Come job. <laughs> Good job. Oh, bad people. Bad people. All right. This you haven't earned the right to do that yet. Okay. So uh that's that's a little so I will tell you, here's what everyone tells me when they've got these kind of pop-ups. All right. And we're big fans of pop-ups, but that was too quick. Okay. You haven't earned the right. I'm in the middle of scrolling and looking, and you're basically saying to me, Hey, I really don't care why you're here, but I'm going to throw this down your throat. Okay. You haven't earned the right to do that yet. Okay. Um, email, get a free sample by signing up. Oh my God. Okay. So we've tested, oh, that won't work as well. We've tested this. Whenever you have, by signing up, you're opting into our mailing list. Okay. So you're basically saying, would you like a little spam with that email? Okay, you're, you're, you're telling me what it is. How about instead we put privacy policy that they can click on instead to look at instead of, instead of scaring me? Because here's the thing. If I were to put it in my email address, you are not getting marty at sitetuners.com. You're getting mgreif at, 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 at yahoo.com, which I never look at other than to um, potentially use these spam things that I'm never going to see. So if you want to increase the power, the quality of your list, okay, do that. And I'm going to give you another free advice, this piece of free advice here that will be counterintuitive. Instead of asking for an email, don't ask for anything. Just give it away. And you're like, why would you give it away? You would, thanks for signing up. No, just give it away. Let them download it. And I'm going to give you a bonus tip that you can use that will increase your revenue surprisingly. And the what, the bonus tip is as follows, all right? If, let's just go back to the previous page. If uh, you, you give them a high quality piece of information, all right? And in this high quality download, whatever it is, and you, you provide it all sorts of good stuff in here. And in the middle of it, you have, for more information about XYZ, go to a page. That takes them to a page on your site. Because, and then you've got more marketing. And at the end, you've got another thing, get more information, which takes them to a page. Now, why do you give away stuff for free? Because you want to market to them. Here's what happens. If you give me something for free that's high quality, you're invoking the principle of reciprocity. I now trust you because you didn't ask for anything. When I go to this page and it says, tell us a little bit more about yourself, all right, so that we can provide the information you need, you will now get a good email address. 
And if you give them a couple choices to look at here and they pick it, that's progressive disclosure. So you know more about Dr. Jones versus Dr. Smith. And now your drip marketing campaigns will actually match what their intent is versus getting Dr. Marty's Yahoo email address that I'm never going to go look at, right? The principle of reciprocity, it will lower the volume of leads, but it will increase the quality of the leads and the revenue by an order of magnitude. Is that shocking? That's a little bizarre. Yeah. You, you haven't earned the right to ask for my email address. I don't know you. You could be two people in a cave in Afghanistan. I don't know you. I don't trust you. If I met you, maybe I don't even like you. Give me something. Make me feel loved first. Okay. All right, guys. We are at the hour. Uh, I am hoping that this was uh, uh, was worthwhile for everybody. I, I try to give it my all. Um, if I can be of service in the future, you can go to our website at Site Tuners. You can book an appointment, and we will be happy to abuse you. I mean, review your site, um, uh, you know, one on one, and we'll go from there. Ed, any other comments or thoughts, buddy? Well, Marty, Marty, I, I will I will say just a couple of things. First of all, you you mentioned on the uh, on the phone number, you know, people being concerned, and understandably that some people might be resistant. We added a phone number. We're consumer publishers. So, you know, I think the fear of phone numbers is particularly big. We're dealing with big numbers. We really haven't seen an appreciable difference in call volume, um, but but it's there in people's you know view of our web page every single time. I also want to say that I'm in I'm in historic Salem, Massachusetts. I had my window open and and there was this group of school kids walking by during the thing and one kid at the back of the line said I I, I think I'm going to put the phone number and, and take off the rotating banner on my website as he walked by um so I you know I think you've really driven home some some very clear important messages Marty so well done on that. Um I we, we don't have we, Marty Marty was going to give you feedback additional feedback on our website. Uh, I will say we've made lot we made lots of changes. We still have lots of work to do. This none of this stuff gets done over you know overnight and and um, uh, but we've made so many uh, change positive changes uh, as a result of working with Marty and 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 folks at Site Tuners. So thank you for that. Um, Marty, we're, we're, we will be able to share the slides with people. Is that? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll send you the slides as a PDF. I'll send it to you or to Sue or whoever you tell okay. me. Yeah. Hey, just send yeah. me an email and I'll send it back. Okay. Okay. Yep. That'll be great. And and then we will post this uh, video for people that uh, want to watch it again or share it with people in your organization. Marty, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. For everybody else, um, uh, don't don't forget uh, in three weeks, we've got the Renewed Summit in, in Arlington, Virginia, right? across from downtown Washington, D.C., and I hope to see as many as possible of you there. Uh, thanks, everybody. We'll see you, see you next time.